Hey guys, and welcome back to the podcast. It is cloudy, and today we have Proto Dad. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, how are you feeling? Dude, this is going to be one of those sucking on the halls and coughing every two seconds podcast. Aren't you excited? Are you, are you sick? I think my throat's really dry. It's the weather, dude. Like, as soon as it gets cold, my skin gets all itchy. Throat gets all dry. You know what I mean? Mm, I hate it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, but not me, man. Like, fall, dude, that's my uh, that's my jam. So, like, this is like, I feel home, you know? I when love it gets fall. dreary. I, yeah, when it gets, like, cool and the wind blows, it's just a little bit nippy and the fucking, it's overcast. Uh, I didn't mean to say fucking, I'm going to chill out on that, but, uh, and it's like the sun's not out very much and it's, like, real dreary and stuff and the leaves are falling and, and that's, like, that's what I'm into. Nice. I think fall is my favorite um, season. For sure. Yeah, but I normally don't get sick in the fall, so you got a scratchy throat. Yeah, and it's like, man, my body sucks. <laughs> I have, like, all the ailments. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> it's, yeah. Dude, it's pretty you, don't ha- you, you don't have all the ailments. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I got flat butt. I got, what else? <laughs> Anyways... <clears throat> No hair, yeah. Eczema, the eczema. I don't know. I was just. I do have eczema. You got really, really tight, young skin. Ugh, nobody likes that. Smooth. Not at all. Oh no. Hairless Brown? body. Oh, that's the worst. Yes. Yeah. No, kissed by the sun. Bronze. <laughs> Yuck! I don't even think about it at all. Ever. Olive skin. That's a. Yeah. Olive skin. That's a what we call it lyric. Um, um, hold on, the cranberries. Oh, dude, you know what? You're pretty close. Nineties. Oh, okay. Hold on. If I could remember the stupid song. Garbage. Dude, even closer. Not uh, volcano girls. Uh, Baruch Assault. Not not female. There is a female in the band though. That's. The singer, a singer, but she was kind of hogtied. Um, and she played bass. Wow. Uh, that's oh, almost too much. Three, three non blondes. Close, but not at all. You're going. You're getting colder. Getting colder. <laughs> yeah. Colder. Um, you, you were liquid fire, but now you're cold <sighs> as an ice cream truck. Why can't I remember this stupid lyric? I love this lyric. It's weird. It's about somebody molesting somebody. But anyways. Oh, my um, gosh. Why? Hollow skin, blah, blah. You hand me a Coke, and then you touch me. Or something stupid like that. Sounds like Tool. Yeah, for real. Jesus. Yeah, he he was wearing Van sipping Coke. He told me that he thought we were. Selling out, sucking up, to the fucking man. up to the man. Yeah, yeah, that was a good song. I love that song. Yeah, that song's really good, man. Because it's like uh, it was the first. Like I listened to it, and you know, like I'm kind of dumb. So whenever I listen to music, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't fucking get it at all. Uh, so I have to listen to it over and over and over and over again. And then I have to like specifically look up the the lyrics because I mean, I just make stuff up in my head. Like, I don't know what the, I can't, like, I can't understand the English these people speak. So I have to read the words. And then it's like, it took me years. And I was like, dude, the stuff he's saying in that song is really raw and awesome. It's like, I sold out a long time ago, buddy, to make some music, to, to, to get my name out there and to get on a record that got into your hands and you bought it. I got your money. I sold out. You sold out. We're both fucked. So let's just, you know, I, I man, I loved it. Yeah, I like it. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Family friendly. Got to keep it family friendly. New tattoo. I can't even say tattoo, to be honest, if you cannot discuss tattoos on this podcast. You don't, you don't like tattoos? Remember when tattoos used to be a thing? 
there's this Dennis Rodman interview where he was saying he was going to get cut by the Bulls if he got another tattoo or something like that. It was like I don't know old what that. 90s um, interview, I think. He was going to get cut by the Bulls? Yeah. Oh, you mean, oh, the, 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 the institution, the group he was a part of. Yeah, if he got another the, tattoo. And it's like this dude won like three or four championships. And, and they were like... They were like, listen here, Dennis, we like the hair, love the earrings. <laughs> listen, but 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 the, the, the people, the cr- the crowd we're trying to draw, they give over their hard earned money that they're separating their from their wallets. They just don't like the any more tattoos, Dennis, for the for the love of all that is holy. No, I don't believe that at all. That seems that seems stupid. And I, I probably already mentioned this before, but, you know. Talk about Japan. You can't have tattoos and go into a bathhouse. Cause Why? Because they, they associate it with the Kuza. So, so even in, even over there with today's like internet, you know, like a thousand download speed, thousand gigabits or whatever it's called, flippity flops. They, they, they still think that everybody that's got a tattoos in the Yakuza, that seems stupid. It does. And there's specific ones, too, that you 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 could, they kind of like advertise of like, hey, tattoos are welcomed. So you, you like, have to go to a specific one. Uh, you have to go to a specific one, man. Dude, that seems really, that seems like you've been fed some misinformation. That's like me saying that every Asian guy knows fucking Kung Fu. That's or, or every Mexican is in is in MS thirteen or something. Because that seems I, silly. <clears throat> it does seem silly. I, I'm not sure if it's misinformation because there's multiple people who have multiple videos of like the top five things you need to know about Japan. And you know, bathhouses are one of the popular stuff in Japan to do. And most of them say, Hey, there's signs saying absolutely no tattoos. Are you, you because they associate it. I mean it might just be their culture with the Yakuza. And so there's specific ones that if you go on your website and they even tell you, hey, call ahead of time to see if they do allow tattoos. Hmm. Strange and unusual. Um, so you're really you're really interested in going to Japan, huh? One hundred percent, dude. Like uh, the steps are almost all in place. Almost. So you're trying to take your whole family, right? Well, I hell mean- no. Immediate family. Hell no. <laughs> My kids are staying here. They're so disappointed. I just you like, can't be serious. One hundred percent serious. If I die over there, I need you to like give them food and help them learn how to hunt and prepare for end times. <laughs> I think I could probably do that. Um, I'm kind of equipped for it. Exactly. That's why I'm going to you. You have that responsibility. No problem. Easy. I, I've raised kids with with very little effort, no problem. <laughs> nice. Have your kids ever shot a gun? No, not at all. And I was always I, my kids don't even know I have a gun. Yeah, I've mentioned yeah. it a few times before, and they were like, "What? You don't have a gun?" I'm like, "I guess not." Which yeah. it's almost like I don't have it. I mean, that's it just sits in the safe. Yeah. But, yeah. Don't go looking for it, kids. Yeah, it's pretty. I, I keep that shit pretty safe. That's good. That's good. That's really smart. Um, except you need to make sure that you keep it in a place that you can get to it when you need, like, in a moment's notice. Because it, it, it might as well be in another state if you can't. That's one of my stress dreams is that somebody's at the door or somebody's driving up and I'm running down the hall like an endless hallway and I'm running into endless closets trying to find my fucking my, my gun. Have you had that dream before? Oh yeah, multiple times. It's, like I said, it's one of my. It's like a theme in a lot of my stress dreams. Mm. It's like me running to the gun or making that decision of like, okay, freaking you know, out. Should about I stay it. or should I go now? Type thing. Should I go and get the gun? Would that take too long? Do I need you to cut take out on me. now? Oh no, really? Do I get the gun or do I do I just run in now? You know which one? It's one yeah. of those type of dreams. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's terrible. I mean, it's it's probably healthy that you're having dreams like that because that means that at a subconscious level, you're preparing yourself for an event like that and you're doing it for the right reasons. A, 
means you're helping you're, you're trying to help your family in danger and b you know you have a tool to help you do the job true because so i had somebody recently asked me they said i keep having these nightmares that somebody's harming my kid and it's you know and and they're and they were they're feeling real bad that they were having dreams like that because they thought they, they were sick they themselves there was something wrong with them because the dreams made them feel like shit as you would as you would imagine if you were faced with dreams you've had multiple times in a month or something of your of you not being able to stop your kids from getting hurt and it's really hurting your heart and you know making you upset and i told him that's an absolute good thing i said that's a, that's an absolute good dream to have and i'll tell you why because it proves that on a, at a on a conscious level a subconscious level that you care about your family members and you're trying to actively protect them from harm because if you didn't give a shit, you'd never have a dream like that. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, because if, if, if you absolutely did not care, you would never have a nightmare that, that are acting out your fears, right? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's interesting. I mean, <clears throat> it's kind of in a place, uh, I mean, I don't know what. Home security is so crazy. I, I definitely want to get like brand new doors, brand new windows. I want to get one of those rings. So do you got a ring? No, we don't have one yet. Maybe we'll get one. They're so cool. They're, they're, they're a lot cooler than I figured they were. Yeah, they've blown up. So the people, I think the people that uh, thought up, dreamt up that idea, I think they're making bank right now. Oh, hell yeah. And I want to say they're not that that expensive now i wanted i got one from my mother it was super cheap i want to say it was under a hundred dollars for sure and she loves it and it you get them on groupon i don't know why for whatever reason i just haven't pulled the trigger and just gotten one yeah well probably because you can't even afford to have unlimited data on your cell phone yeah that's true Ugh, i'm grandfathered in a, f a plan yeah and the plan itself is better than the plan they're offering so you can't get out of it yeah, and it's one of those, it's definitely like you turn around, it's like, oh, I've been paying X amount of dollars a month for this thing. And it's like, yeah, it's a supercomputer in my pocket, but how much value is it to me, really? It's it's insane how expensive phones are. Yeah, you, yeah, phones. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I like the iPhone. It's super cool. But it's so it's one of those so annoying things. It's like totally first world problems. What is? In my phone, because it's like, okay, the data. Oh, now I'm out of data. No, oh, I paid all this money, and then oh man, uh, the memory on my phone's not working. And then the pictures, they do this stupid thing, and it's like, oh my gosh. But it's like literally yeah. a supercomputer in my pocket, and I'm complaining about it. Yeah, I agree. Um... Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but uh, man, you really need this. You need to figure out how to get some of that unlimited data, man. I need to do that, and I need to do it for uh, my internet too, because my brother just got it. And he, every time I talk to him, he brags about it. Yeah, man, I'm paying less money. It's still like yeah. hundreds of dollars, but he has like the almost the ultimate package. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hundreds of dollars. Yeah, it's hundreds of dollars. Because see, now with the PlayStation Five, I got that, and it's it's like that with every edition. It seems like oh, you just got the biggest and best TV, biggest and best PlayStation, biggest and best computer. But then the resources it takes up, it just it jumps up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it yeah. does because when I got my newest phone, my data at the end of the month was running up. I got ten gigs, right? Mm -hmm. Before I would use seven, eight with like a BS iPhone six or whatever it was, and then I get the iPhone ten. I don't know if this is just in my head, but multiple months I was hitting the ten gigs almost, and I'm like, I'm doing the same stuff. It's not like I'm watching more YouTube. I'm on the internet more often. So why, why is my phone using more resources? Could be, it could be because it was able to stream video at a higher quality more often. And. <laughs> Now that you said that, probably the same thing with my PlayStation. I get one game, brand new game out the box, right? Obviously, it has a download. I download one game. I'm going to run out of data on my internet yeah. plan that month. 
Like, oh, I have to take oh. steps to, you know, haul it back. Yeah, you got to ration out the data. Exactly. One game, dude. This one month, I, I, I got like three games, and it was it was pretty bad. Damn, man. Um, my uh, my plan is just internet service that's intermittent, that like it actually just cuts out and doesn't work. Like intermittent um, but fasting? Well, yeah, like intermittent fasting. Like the, yeah, the, the um, millennial, millennial diet bull crap. Um, yeah, so my internet is turbo crap, but uh, I don't have data. I have unlimited data on my internet. I haven't heard anybody that has limited, limited data on their home internet, though. That just seems weird. Hadn't heard that in a long time. Well, you see, on the internet provider I have, all plans have this X amount of data. It's like 128 gigs. Now, the only way you could get out of that is to pay like $90 to specifically have zero cap. So I'm like the second to highest um, data rate or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But if you have the, the lowest data rate or the second to highest data rate, you all have the same cap. 128 gigs doesn't matter. Hmm. So I'm thinking I'm I, I'm just uh, every time I download a game it takes up more internet. Like you said, 4K. I got 4K on Netflix and all that BS. <laughs> yep. So maybe it's just all that noise. Could be. Yeah, man. I mean, first world problems. First world problems. And speaking of Netflix, Proto, have you seen any good movies lately? I actually have seen one. I think on my podcast we talked about Dances with Wolves, and I uh, I didn't get it on. I didn't watch it on Netflix. I don't think they had it, but uh, I watched it on Amazon Prime. They had it for free, which is totally cool. So, yeah, I sat down one sitting, man. Watched Dances with Wolves. It was pretty pretty dang cool. Anyways, so what video games have you played? So I've been playing a whole lot of the Cycle Frontier. <laughs> I just and so how is Dances with the Wolves, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, and for all those folks at home that don't know, this is a movie that came out in the '90s. Uh, yeah, or early '90s. Kevin Costner and uh, a whole bunch of Native American actors. Was there uh, was there any Native American actors that were your favorite? My Native American brother. Well, the main Native American kind of like. Yeah, he wasn't like the, the main one. He, he was like the secondary secondary actor. He was like host co-star or whatever he was like the, he was like the 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 native kevin costner character right yeah right i, I yeah th- i liked him a lot but he was really confusing at first i think just with all the face paint and all the brown people running around it seemed like the movie kind of lost track of like who he was where he was what his relationship to everybody in the tribe was so I wish that was a little bit better because I think they could have made him a better like bro character, right? Because he's supposed to be like the best friend, buddy type, the wise one. He he was the he was the witch doctor or whatever. No, no, the, so yeah, that's, medicine see, man. That, that's not who I'm talking about. That oh, you're talking you're talking about the aggressive dude. Aggressive, yes, and it confused me how they kind of put him into the story and then you know sometimes they have like headdress or war paint or and you couldn't tell which one was which. Yeah, I could tell him. That's racist. That's I, racist, dude. One hundred percent. Because I'm like, is that my uncle Frank? <laughs> like Frank? What the hell? Like Frank Fence Post or uh, what? what <laughs> William William Knife Man? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I don't know. But uh, damn horse, <clears throat> damn horse stepped to the hole, flipped over, killed me. He's the best part of that show. That show kind of sucked, but that, yeah, but yeah, that movie. I, I think he was kind of pretty cool character, but I, I thought there was potential to be cooler. Yeah, wind through it winds through his hair. Yes, yes. Yeah. So how'd you like it, man? What's your thoughts? Um, I liked it quite a bit. I think uh, the the biggest the thing the thing that impressed me the most about this movie is that. Um, comparing it to movies that we see nowadays coming out of Hollywood, like the big ones that are advertised all over the place, everywhere you look, that try to convince you to watch the, you know, this shovelware piece of crap, um, 
a hastily put together, poorly thought out movie that we, we get to watch nowadays. Um, this movie. And it could be because this movie just stands the test of time versus all the ones that came out in, in the era around it in the early 90s. But what I'm trying to say is like in this movie, all the characters seem to have a believable motivation to do the things they're doing on screen. As opposed to a lot of movies that we see now where the characters just do something in the movie because the script says they do that now. And it's like the care, the care, like the the actors playing the characters. They're just just a, a puppet model in front of the camera. They're not they, like they don't have any. Like you can't, um, like Captain Marvel. Are you still with me? Yes, yes. Like Captain Marvel. Like a lot of the uh, in that movie. Like a lot of the characters. They just don't have any heart. They don't have any motivation. Mm-hmm. It's not believable what they're doing. Um, there's a there's a boatload of other other ones other examples I can't think of any movies there's off the a, top a, of my head. A lot of less baby eating in the nineties too. Less baby mm. eating. Know them Hollywood folk, but yeah, oh, you know. Yeah, oh gosh, I'm I think I'm just a sucker for characters who are depressing, or who don't like <laughs> themselves, or you know what I mean. Like mm. y- okay. you're supposed to have this image of a character like Cloud from Final Fantasy. Okay. Supposed to be a badass, ultimate warrior, great, but in reality they're just a piece of crap like everybody else. So when the movie started sure. with Kevin Costner trying to oof himself, I thought that was like, whoa! Like I didn't see this coming. Yeah, trying to oof him, trying to unalive himself, as exactly. the kids say on the streets these days. Uh, yeah, that was definitely uh, cool and surprising because I was sitting there on the couch going, "What the hell is he doing? What the hell? What the hell is am I watching right now?" And uh, so that's that's art. That's some some well thought out character arc. Um, I liked it, man. Like I said, the the biggest takeaway was characters seemed like they did stuff that made sense in the setting, and you understood where they're coming from, and you understood why they're doing what they're doing through the whole film. And I was I was really pleased with that. Um, I did I did seem I did feel like it was a little uh, a little far fetched that they would have a. A white female grow up in the tribe, though. That just seemed a little... 100% agree with you. But I will say this. As a certain native Comanche, I'll just say it. I don't care. That that was one of the stories in Comanche um, past is that the leader of the tribe, Kwana Parker, stole a white woman... And basically made him made her one of his like eighteen wives or whatever it was, and she kind of became popular, even to the point to where like Joe Rogan talks about it all the time. About she grew older and she wrote a book, and the descendants wrote a book about you know her growing up with the natives after being stolen. Hmm. So I one hundred percent think it's like oh god, because you yeah. it can't be with the native woman, right? It has yeah, to be. It has to align perfectly where there's some white chick who and she knows some English still, and that was the way they could communicate. Yeah. She, oh, I don't know no English. No yeah, that more. was that. Oh, that, that, that what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me no no. Oh, what? Uh, he was like, "What is your name?" And she was like, uh, st- 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 st. And "She started talking like she has a stutter." It was like, "Dude, that's not how. That's not how you remember words." You don't go st- 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 standing. Oh, man. Fist. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I, you're I, st- standing fist. Oh, okay. I, as far as female characters go, she definitely wasn't my favorite. No, but I understood that it was still a movie. And True. they had they had an idea, and they were like... They were like, there's a language barrier. How do we bridge the gap to make this come together faster? Oh, we have one that speaks some English. How do we have one that speaks some English? Well, and then the rest is history. And I like how it wasn't like a white savior movie. Um, I was going to say it was kind of a little bit, but... See, I, I want to say I've heard this argument before. I don't know if it was from The Last Mohicans or if it was specifically this movie. I, I yeah, want to say I've heard that the, before. The Last Samurai? Or The Last Samurai. 
I've never seen either the last Samurai or the last Mohegan, so I don't know. So I want to say, I I know, I need to. So I want to say this movie, I've heard that argument before. But in my opinion, I know it sounds cheesy. I think it's a brown person saver movie. Because, like I said, yeah, they saved his life. They gave him purpose. Which I think, as I get older, is more of a theme in what wise people say. is like, you need a purpose in life. You need to have a reason to wake up. You know what I mean? And do what you need to do. And this guy had no purpose. His country was going to let him rot and die in some war that had no purpose to him, I guess. And so he tried to kill himself. And then after that failed, he basically banished himself from society. And this culture slash people gave him a reason to live, gave him a purpose to wake up. And you know what I mean? Gave him his own spot in the world, his own TP woman, everything. To yeah. where he was willing to die again, but he wasn't willing to die just to kill himself. He was willing to die to save his purpose in life, which was his new community, that is brown folk. Yeah, yeah, geez. Um, yeah, you put that beautifully. Golly, um, for sure. I see that now. I wish I had something smart to say. <laughs> Alphabet. Um, Alphabet? I don't know why I thought about that. Um, uh, but, uh, dictionary. Yeah, dictionary, the encyclopedia. So, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. So I thought that, to me, that, that that was the theme of the movie is purpose. And I think it, it, it showed that really well. Yeah, I dig that. I dig that quite a bit. Um, and it's like you watch the movie and you, and you just think, I'm not going to say too much more about it, but I'm going to say, uh, I mean about this, this in particular, what I'm about to say, I'm not going to go on and spoil anything, but if he would have just kept the damn journal with him, you know, <laughs> I almost feel like you could even say the journal was a representation of his quote unquote past, obviously, because that's what you do when you write in a journal, you write about what, ultimately becomes your past and that was almost like the anchor to his old self so if sure. leaving the journal behind is like he's killing himself he's killing his old self and now he's now his new self he doesn't need the journal anymore you know what yeah I mean? but he but but he had to go back and get it but he had to go back and get it because this past will creep up and harm him and his new family well yeah he, he's, which ended he up says happening. that well kind of i mean I think he brought he brought it about quicker, but but yeah, um, yeah, and then isn't it complex? Like everything is so nuanced and complex. Well, of course, the movie's three hours long, so the movie has enough time to breathe and let things develop with a slow burn, um, which I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate that the, that the movie was a was a slow burn with a lot of the details that they pieced together and let relationships grow and. And things changed because it's like if he hadn't if he hadn't met the Native American people and also hadn't tried so hard to make a bond with them, like if they just kept their distance with each other, when those when those soldiers finally showed up to reinforce the thing, he would have had a completely different stance. It would have been a completely different, you know, end of his life, whatever that may have been. And but because he went out and and was was away just long enough to get absorbed into their culture just long enough that when he reunited with his his troop his union um, army buddies or whatever not friends but part of his 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 actual official duties they couldn't recognize him they didn't recognize him and they treated him like an outsider and that and you can feel because we've all had people do this to us we, you feel abandoned and you feel like you've been purposely uh, targeted by people that you thought was on your side, should have been on your side. Like maybe it was a family member that's happened, that's happened to us, or maybe it was coworkers or, you know, whatever. And so we can, we can sympathize with the character when he is mistreated by people that's supposed to be that's supposed to be on his side, even though we can tell that that his it's not a that's not a people he's trying to be a part of anymore. 
Hmm. You know, because those those dudes didn't have to just start shooting and beating him and stuff like that. They didn't have to kill the horse, and but they did. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah, because they did because they're bored, because they're uneducated, and they're shitty, and they're in bad moods because they're all the way out in the middle of nowhere with little to do and not enough food and stuff to keep them happy. And they're miserable. They're short-sighted. They're told they're told they got to be out there and ready to fight whatever opposition comes their way. So anything not dressed in blue gets is immediately targeted as enemies and we we see that sometimes today when people talk about police, so Tonka Tonka. I find Tonka, Tonka Tonka yeah, a lot of people that's a meme. Yeah, that's Tonka Tonka. I was I had some secondhand embarrassment when he was doing that. I was like, Oh jeez, dude. <laughs> just as like, dude, just draw a freaking picture in the dirt. <laughs> it's not that hard. Did you watch this with your wife or just yourself? Yeah. I watched it with her. She says she's seen it probably a dozen times before, but I said, you're going to lay on the couch with me. Nice. I don't know how you watch movies. You watch movies with your wife? Man, it's just a time issue. I rarely have time to watch anything with her. I watch mostly movies with my kids. Like We watched half of uh, Full Metal Jacket last night. <gasps> that movie's so good. You know, the first half is really the only part of the movie you need to watch. That's why I keep telling my son, but he he's like up in arms about watching the second half of the movie. I'm like, dude, well, you it need sucks. To. It's so boring. It, yeah, it, it brings no it, it brings it brings it together. That's when the movie actually starts. But really, it's two completely different movies smashed together. It's so ugh. It's different. It's different pacing. It's different theme. It's a different feel. It's a different everything. But you need to finish it. Uh, I most likely won't. But me, me so horny, me so horny. You party? <laughs> me love you long time. Oh my gosh! Your kids will love it. I bet they will. He's like really adamant about it. But I'm like, dude. In a few years, Dude, maybe you could revisit it. I don't know. Dude, just watch it with him. Watch the rest of the movie. Uh, Spend, it, make some popcorn. Sit on the couch. Squeeze, hug, and love on him. And just watch the movie. You're trying to convince me. It's almost working. Did you watch it in this place yet? I haven't seen Shinder. No, I haven't watched it yet. I need to. I'll put that in my notes. Yes. I'm painting my fingernails right now. As soon as they're dry. I'm so excited that you watched Dances with Wolves, and that was Dances with Wolves Review with Proto. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it to me, because like I said, I've never seen it. I've Actually, I've, I take that back. I've seen bits and pieces of it when I was young, back in the 90s. I specifically remember certain scenes. I was like, yeah, I've seen that scene before, but there's no... I, I, I've probably, probably seen a grand total of 20 minutes of that film before. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good one. I'm glad you, you you mentioned it. Have you seen The Postman yet? I have not. I try to look it up, and it's not on any of the streaming services. That's too bad. So I, I want to say I, I tried Amazon, didn't I? Now that now that I'm thinking about it, now that you said something, I don't I don't know if I have it on DVD anymore. Um, I actually we took a whole lot of our Blu-rays and DVDs, and we traded them in at the vintage stock and got a PlayStation once. So. There's a lot of movies I just don't have anymore. I want to say I tried Amazon. I mean, if 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 I stumble upon it, I'll definitely watch it. Yeah, The Postman is cool, man. It's, it's real good. It's another banger from Kevin Costner. I was about to say, I want to watch it just because of Kevin Costner. Yeah, dude. Totally worth it. Hmm. Yeah, so what's your favorite part of uh, Full Metal Jacket? The first, the first half. Uh, probably like the first minute is my favorite part. The first minute. Yeah, yeah, we just straight up yelling and screaming, and is that know. how the movie opens? 
Yeah, that's how the movie opens, is them getting their head shaved, and then, boom, he's screaming and yelling. It's cl- I've seen it so many times, it's so classic. Yeah, that it's 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 historical. It's Yeah, it's super classic. Because I was in RTC when I was in high school for like three years, and there was definitely shades of all that junk. Because my first sergeant was a Marine. And my commander was Navy, but like he really didn't teach the class that much. Hmm. But I love just just uh, 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 uh. it's like <laughs> the industry. You can't understand what the hell is saying, but that's like how like the old school guys do it. Oh so, yeah, when they're like marching. Yeah, when they're like marching or whatever. But I want to say it's yeah, definitely the first few minutes. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> I could not be a Marine. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. I don't know what I've been told. But Eskimo pussy is mighty cold. <laughs> Dang it. That's what I was going to say. Oh. You should have said it. I was so close. I knew he was going to say that. Because when we would do PT, my first sergeant had like five minutes of that. Of those like songs or whatever. And I don't know if he just ripped it off of the movie or if like he knew it. I'm guessing he he knew he just knew the Marine Corps ones. But so, did you ever take the ASVAB test? I'm sure I took the ASVAB test. I don't. I wasn't interested in going into the military. I didn't care. We had to in high school. Yeah. What was the high score? Is it was it like the zero to four hundred test or was it a zero to two hundred? I think it was zero to ninety nine. I want to say right. Oh, okay. Well, I don't remember. I want to say it's like zero to ninety nine. And what I was told by like a recruiter guy, because you know he came into all the RTC classes and shit, of course. <laughs> yeah. And he was like Air Force guy. Do look like he was on drugs. Yeah. And he's like, people ask him, like, "What do we need to do to get in there?" And then he's basically saying, if you score a thirty. You could turn brown water into clear water. And he said it like super condescending. He was like a pilot. He's like, if you score 30, you're almost good enough and intelligent enough to filter water. And everyone's like, oh, shit. Okay. And so. But they need they need water filters. I guess so. But apparently a goddamn roach could do it. So <laughs> I had this recruiter come up to me and he was a different guy. And he was super cool. Really nice guy awesome he's like so you want to be in the army and i like lied to everybody for like three years like yeah for sure let's do it he's like (laughs) okay well how about i come to your house and it was like one of those momentum things where it's like yeah come to my house like i couldn't say no and i just i just like bullshitted him he's like okay it was like my parents anniversary this super nice guy drives up to my house my dad answers the door so it's my anniversary. You know, he's like yelling and screaming. And this guy's like, why did you invite me to your house on your parents? And what are you doing? Like, they're about to go. I said, no, it's okay. Come on. And so he sits at my <laughs> table. And he's like, so you want to be in the military, right? And I was like, yeah, for sure. And I completely did not want to. And I sit down and take the ASVAB for like the fifth time, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, let's see your score. It was like a 17. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Would you just like bomb it on purpose? No, I really tried hard. I'm like, I'm <laughs> going to try my damnedest. And he looked at me like, so this says you're basically a functioning mental person. Yeah, you're 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 just intelligent enough to take care of yourself, but not intelligent enough to be useful to anybody else whatsoever. And he was looking at the score, and he looked at me, <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> So what These, happened here? And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know. He's like, you I said don't you, know. You, Looks <laughs> like you wasted your time again. <laughs> He's like, you said you've taken this before. I was like, yeah, I think I got a twenty on my first time. He's like, what twenty? Like, yeah, I guess I regret. I, I don't know, man. He's like, I don't, 
Well, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> he just had the, I can't explain the look because he smiles, laughing, joking, and then like he saw the score and looked at me like, "Oh, now I know what's going on." <laughs> okay, uh, that's terrible. Um, I want to say that I heard it was, it was there was a cutoff, like also, like there's basically an IQ number, like if it's below sixty you won't be useful. You're actually a liability to the military and they won't take you. So the ASVAB is like a representation of that. Yeah, because they're an employer that could discriminate against you, right? Like that was one of the things that we were always told, like the military can discriminate against you if you're injured, if you're this, if you're that, if you have medical reasons, if you're not smart enough. Like it doesn't matter. They could say, "Yeah, we're not going to hire you. You're too dumb, yeah. or you got you you know your left foot's bigger than your right foot, or so, whatever." Whatever they want, yeah, yeah, whatever they want. And then, like, if you do sign up, then it's like all your constitutional rights are like p- pretty much out the door. Yeah, because you become their property. Yeah, pretty crazy. Until 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 your you know until your services are until you're released back into a normal civilization. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I often, often wonder what it would like to be to serve in the military, but I never wanted to do it myself. That's true. Like, it's crazy how motivated some people are. And not in a bad way, it's just sort of like, wow, really? That's cool. Yeah. Because I used to go to school with, like, you know, people that you'll see like in the military uniforms and there's there'll be even like foreign people like trying to go to the military to become a US citizen. Like I guess that's that's a pathway to citizenship is if you serve X amount of years. Makes sense. And so there was like in my social studies class or whatever it was in college, this dude was like all about the America. He was like from Africa, all about America, all about the the military, all about becoming a citizen. He was like super motivated. I was like, oh, man, that's good stuff, man. That's cool. Mm-hmm. But me, I'm like, well, I'd rather eat, like, chocolate and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather sit around and watch war movies. Chill. And chill. And chill. Yeah. <laughs> that class mm-hmm. was like a four-year momentum of just me not saying no. That's funny. What a What a con artist you are. True, I lie to myself and others around me. Um, I lie to myself and others around me. <sighs> I still can't remember that stupid lyric, that song. And it's making olive me angry. Skin. Maybe I should look it up. I think it, it's Olive Skin, Lemon Yellow Sun, Arms Raised in a V. Near the Dead Lay. And the coke lays. In pools of maroon below. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, let me let me look up this song. Uh oh. Look it up. I'm gonna look up a, a different song just so I can get the stupid band's name, because I can't even think of a damn band's name. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna look up the actual song. Uh oh. And this is gonna amount to nothing. <clears throat> Melissa McBride. Uh, Francis Black. No idea. Really? Yeah. Is she the one that sung "I'm a bitch, I'm a bitch"? No, it's I'm a dude. A... It's a, it's a male oh. singer. Oh man! Don't ever call me Francis. <laughs> uh, gee, Remember Francis. <laughs> and I could write it right, Pee Wee. Uh, was that guy's name Francis too from Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I was I, I was making a uh, a movie quote from a movie called Stripes, military movie with Harold Ramis and uh, Bill and Murray. Uh, Bill Murray. Yeah, where they were they were sh- in the boot camp guy with a guy named Francis. He was like, and don't touch any of my stuff. Or I'll kill you. And don't, don't be touching me either, or I'll kill you. 
And don't ever call me Francis, or I'll kill you. You want to slighten up Francis. <laughs> My dad watched that all the time. I, I, I haven't seen it. Dude, all that movie through. is so funny. It, it like as you get older, you can appreciate it. like you get the jokes, dude. It's so funny. Yeah, they in the beginning when the recruiters asking them like questions, like do you really want to be part of the army or whatever, and and one of the questions is, uh, have you ever been convicted of a crime? And and Harold Ramis is like never convicted. <laughs> mm. uh, that's funny. Now, are, are either one of you two homosexuals? Um, no, but we are willing to learn. <laughs> uh, that's another movie I got to watch. Yeah, it's a good one, man. It's funny. I want to say I only seen the ending, right? Where they like they were like held up, or, or something. They, they 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 like rescue their buddies in a tank. They like roll up in a tank and rescue their their uh, drill drill sergeant who got captured by the. Uh, Russians, I guess. Maybe I'm thinking about another movie. So here's a lyric that's not going to amount to anything. Okay. I was talking to a preachy preach about kissy kiss. He bought me a soda. He bought me a soda. He bought me a soda and he tried to molest me in the parking lot. Yep, 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 yep. I think you're pretty. You make me hard. Your island skin looks Mexican. Our love is rice and beans and horses lard. Your bones got a little machine. You're you're the bone machine. Uh, that's that's some dumb shit. That's really really weird. I talked to a preacher. He preached at me preach. I talked about kissing stuff, and then he touched on my Peter. That seems so stupid. It's very stupid. Island skin. I always thought he said olive skin. My bad. Island skin. I'm an island boy. It looks Mexican. That's funny. Yeah, it's the Pixies. The Pixies? Bone machine. I don't think I ever listened to the Pixies. Dude, get the Greatest Hits album and listen to the first five songs and throw away the last 18. It's fucking oh. amazing. Okay, do I do I buy that with my with American money? That or really just listen to it on YouTube because the album, I think it's now that I'm into video editing, I think they lowered the um the BPMs or whatever to like negative 80. Just because he's like a, it's a really, he's a really screamy guy. You know, he screams a lot. Yeah. So full blast, the album is barely loud. It makes me so annoyed. Hmm. They, that's another one where they just they mix. It seems like they mix the whole album and they just turn the volume way low. So when he screams through half of his songs, it's not like blowing up your speakers, but it makes all all the the songs sound super quiet. Yeah, that seems that seems like a terrible decision. It seems like a very bad decision that I'm going to say they wouldn't have made. So yeah, listen to that. Listen to the first, let's say, 12, 13 songs out of the 22. And... Jeez. Yeah. Do it. Okay. It's super good. Super good. Well, but yeah, he... he, he talks a lot about molestation um incest Mm. religion Mm. these are a few of my favorite things (laughs) with female baser bass guitarist baser the baser is a song too which is good i'm a free baser I'm a Freemason. Yeah, man. I think the Freemasons are just a uh, a gentleman's club. Think so? Yeah, it's just a, just a club for dudes to hang out and be dudes. My, uh, she might get upset, but my wife's grandpa was a part of a gentleman's club. Oh, yeah? And I guess he, like, 
was a part of this club for like half his life. And it was just a bunch of old white dudes who I think probably had a little bit of money. Okay. And when he passed away, they offered to like open their hall. They had like this own specific gentleman's club hall, like down the street from his house. And we showed up and it was, it was pretty cool. It's pretty interesting, you know, cause a bunch of old people, they had a bunch of stories about him and, you know, they talked about it. And I guess it's just one of those places like during the weekend you would go hang out and play cards and you would donate your money to it. Like, I don't know. I think there was just a bunch of rich white dudes just sitting around playing cards. Like that was the just whole point. A, just a place to hang out and get together. Exactly. And one of them told this interesting story. They were like, hey, I, I went to your grandpa. He's such a tight ass. He didn't never spend any money. And he showed me a $10 bill and I wrote down all the information on that $10 bill. And it, exactly a year later, I went up to it again. He pulled out his wallet and he pulled out the $10 bill. And all of the numbers lined up. Hmm. He's like, he never spent any money. And <laughs> and he's saying this to like his daughters that are like, yeah, I know. We, we grew up like with holes in our shoes. What the fuck? <laughs> and this old man was trying to like make it like a lively, heartfelt moment. <laughs> Talking like to his it, like, kids, like it was a virtue or something. Yeah, and they're like, "Yeah, I know. Like we we grew up without yeah. food. Yeah, this yeah. this is a story for you. It's a reality for me." Oh, uh, I, I I thought it was super sweet too. And but like as as like the conversation went on, I like after he walked away, they were looking at each other like, "Yeah, he he didn't spend any." Uh, anyway, I didn't want to be turn it into a negative thing, but. Yeah, I'm not. <clears throat> Don't. I, I won't. <laughs> I ain't. I ain't even. I but, think. Uh, uh, yeah. I think my dad's dad. Um, I didn't. I didn't know my dad's dad very well. I mean, he was my grandpa, and you know, I I was young when he died. But uh, he was a Freemason, from what I understand. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't know anything about it, but I mean, he lived in Oklahoma City. So I guess when you live in the city, there's places to go and things to do. When when you when, like me, if you grow up grow up out in the country, man, there's the things to do is in your own house or on your own property. You don't go anywhere to do anything. So you know, being being a Freemason is like might as well be like a fucking prince in Persia or some shit. It's just not going to happen. I don't know if but, I'd want to be in the gentleman's club. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. Once your kids are grown. I imagine, you know, once I, uh, you know, you see your grandkids maybe every other weekend or something like that, you'll you'll want some place to go and somebody to hang out with that's a little bit more your age and maybe experience some of the same things you've experienced. I mean, there's comfort in in having members of your tribe and being part of your tribe, you know. That's true. I was going to, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm just pleased with having a Discord because that's that's like kind of what I want to build with my Discord. But, you know, it's not it's not nothing yet. It's getting there. I need to urinate. Yeah, you can edit this part out. Yeah. Oh lord. Hello, are you back? That was a lot of urine. That's good. I apologize. Uh, why? For, because it took so long? Yeah, totally unprofessional. Ouch. Ouch. I just itched a pimple and it hurts. Urgh. Yuck. Oh, I hate when you try to like itch like your face and like a random pimple's there that's never been there before. It's like the most pain ever. Yeah, it all of a sudden like... Mmm... Or a pimple on your back you didn't know was there? I'll take a pimple over on my back over the pimple on my face or like in my hair. Like when you're itching your head like really good, you and do not you know what that pimple it. is. And then you catch it with a fingernail and rip it open. Ah, oh, yeah, it hurts so bad. And then you squeeze the, the juices out of it and then it dries all crusty-like up in your hair and shit. And then you pick it off later and eat it. Do you watch those videos online, the disgusting videos? 
of like pimple popping. Yeah, or like flies inside of flesh or worms or <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> no, I watch I watch the pimple popping ones, but I don't watch any of that of what the other stuff you just mentioned. You don't watch bot flies getting squeezed out of somebody's skin and flying away. That bot flies is getting squeezed out of skin. They don't fly away. But yeah, I do watch the bot fly extractions. I like those. Um, they I love fly the... away. You watch a lot of cartoons. Or something. I've seen worms. It... Fly? Yes. Worms don't fly, bro. It had wings and it was going like squawk, squawk, squawk. What do you call that, bro? <laughs> Carrot, carodactyl. A carodactyl. <laughs> carrot, carrot. Oh, mm. I hate those, dude. This, ugh, <clears throat> I find no enjoyment in any Cute. of that. Uh, yeah, I watch the pimple popping ones. I like those quite a bit sometimes. I mean, normally it's like... <sighs> normally it's like a guilty pleasure. I just got to watch like 10 minutes, you know? And you normally it's like every other night or so I'll like, oh, okay, I'm laying in bed and it's time to get cozy. And, you know, you play with your cell phone for about 30 minutes, about every other night, 10 minutes of those of that time is going to be people popping pimples. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. When I piss my wife off and, you know, I'll call her fat or something or maybe oh. I'll smack her ass too hard and she what? gets mad and. I wait like a few minutes and I go up and I'm like, man, this huge pimple's hurting me. And then like it draws her in and then all is forgiven. She has to pop your pimples. She wants to pop my pimples. Oh my gosh. She what a wants sicko. to inflict pain. Like it, oh. it's not a thing to where it's like, oh, it's pop. No, I have to be like, ow, oh my God. Like it totally, could, I've saved our marriage multiple times <laughs> through <laughs> dirt under the skin. Uh, oh, from you just being a dirty, oily boy? Exactly. It's like, this pain will save my marriage. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm so glad I've got clock clogged pores. Do you, do you, like, have your pimple and you're like, I'm going to save that for later. I'm specifically going to piss her off and I'm going to pull that one out. I don't know if this is the place to mention this. Okay. But there's been many a times to where I'm hanging out with my wife. Okay. On a Friday night. Oh, okay. Kids are at the grandma's. Uh oh. Yeah, baby. You know what I'm taking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I can feel it coming. Got a little wine in me. Got a couple okay. of hamburgers in me. I'm like, yeah, okay. baby. And then she comes up to me and says, So you, you didn't wash out your Tupperware? Why not? <laughs> and I stop, I stop Proto, and I look in the air, I look in the sky, in the clouds next to God, and there's this number, this counter, and it's like 1,200,564, right? Oh, okay. And it's av how many times I will have sex in my life, the total <clears throat> number of times. And it just dropped. And I look at that number and I go, Bitch, if I have high heels on, I ain't no fucking woman. I ain't cleaning out my goddamn tub where you're using soap and water, ain't you? What the fuck are you going to use to clean this shit out? You have a dishwasher. It literally washes the dish for you. I don't need a wife. It is employed by me. And then it drops to a three. And mm -hmm. then it's just like I, I knew it was going to happen. Mm. And sometimes I look at that number and I don't got, I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll be like, I'm sorry, wife. My man, my bad. I should have soaked it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry wife. Sorry, dude. Oh, my, my, my outburst, my outburst that I had just now was unwarranted. As a matter of fact, I'm practicing for, uh, for an art class. I'm doing some acting now. That was a character. Exactly. That was a, that was a character I've been working on. The character's name is getting respect out of his wife, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's funny. Um, that's interesting. That's not how I. That's not how my relationship is. Your number is just constantly going up, huh? You dirty dog. 
<laughs> damn dirty dog. You damn dirty dog. Yeah, I think. I feel uh, you, brother. I feel you. I think it's pretty. Uh, I think uh, we got a good thing going on. I'm lucky that I have a wife like I have, man. She's uh, super, super cool. She's like, uh, you know, just just rock and roll t-shirt and jeans. You know, no makeup, no extra bullshit. You know, she doesn't have a purse. She doesn't have to worry about the girly stuff. I mean, it's fine if she if she wanted to one day, but it's it's real casual, man. Real cool, easy communication. We we jive on the same wavelength. You know, except for whenever I'm not talking or when she's not talking or whatever. But for the most part, I mean, it's like, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. I can dig it. And I do the dishes. You do the dishes? I do. Oh, God. (laughs) I'm one of those. I'm one of those husbands. Oh, fuck. I hate the dishes. I've always hated the dishes. Not just because I have eczema. It's just because it's like, no, I'm not doing it. I don't like getting wet. Partially, right? <laughs> you don't like, you know, if you were getting wet, you want head wet head to toe. You don't like just your hands and arms getting wet. Head to toe in a pool, hanging out. I, I don't like my socks getting wet. I don't like my my belly, my fat ass belly sliding around on the sink and it getting wet. Oh, my that bitch, makes me angry. My bitch tits getting wet from all the all the sweat from the heavy work. Exactly. My I, I don't like to put pants on without socks. It triggers okay. me, Proto. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm not all about that life. Okay. The, the the only times I'm without socks is when I'm taking a shower. Really? Yeah, socks on twenty four seven. No, and no. Yeah. I always thought that was like a condition. It is a condition. It's it's I got cold feet. Oh God, that's and that's how my cousins were. Did you always have socks on. Always, and they would make you put socks on. Like if you would spend the night at the house, You're like, they're like, "Why do you have bare feet out on the carpet? Why? You're gonna stain the carpet. It's gonna turn yeah. yellow because all the sweat <laughs> and oil off your foot. You have to put socks on. Oh, it's so annoying. Oh, so you peel socks off, huh? Whenever you get home, and you you strip down to your boxers. Yes, one hundred percent. I work out in my boxers. I hang out in my boxers. I watch movies with the kids in the boxers. Okay. I, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I have socks on. That's just the way it is. I could dig it. Socks for, on. For Proto, just... it works, and I understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're the. Uh... All my socks are like the uh, almost knee knee high socks with the three like brown stripes like straight from 1987. They're super thick, right? Yeah, mm. super thick stripes. I mean, you want the barrier between you and the floor to be thick. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically, I have like a, a, a slippers. I put slippers on, and then I put my boots on. I really wish. Now, see, I will say this. I really wish I was Donald Duck. Like, watching you, a Donald Duck cartoon and him going to bed in the jammies with the hat on, with the little slippers, and just yawning, stretching. He's so tired. He had slippers? I want to say he had slippers. Did he not? I thought, I thought he had big old <clears throat> floppy duck feet. Or am I, I thinking of, I'm thinking of Scrooge McDuck. You may, might be thinking of Scrooge McDuck. I'm thinking about like so tired, his eyeballs red. He sets his alarm. He gets into bed. You know how he sounds. I'm like, oh, I want that to be my life. Like at night, I just, mm. I cannot do slippers or pajamas or a little hat with a cotton ball on. I just can't. I'm just not that guy. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a I'm not a hat person. Man, I wish I could be that. Kind. Like that would be heaven to me mm. yeah that's a cartoon but then like a ghost wakes him up or something I don't want that to happen uh, uh, the ghost of ducks past or whatever yeah how was your Halloween it was pretty uneventful nice. <sighs> we went out and did some trunk or treat because you know you can't do trick or treat no more that's too dangerous so we went out and did some trunk or treat. My youngest son, he got a little bit of candy, and then it was like, okay, 
let's go back to the video game. So we we uh, we dipped and hit the highway. Highway. Yeah, man. I think we watched. Uh, we ended up watching a scary movie called The Forest with. Uh, Oh hell, I don't even know what actors or actresses. It's basically uh it's a a, a pretty second rate B B rate horror movie about uh, the the suicide forest in Japan. Oh you know nice. like, Logan Paul, like, that's who started it. Logan Paul, yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Logan Paul, um also um distasteful starred in it and also disgraceful. <sighs> yeah, it was okay. I mean, it was kind of like a, a that movie was kind of like a ring wannabe. Like it kind of wanted to be the ring, and then it kind of wanted to be like a ghost horror story. Like horror, I don't, I don't fucking know, man. But it was okay. It was okay for what it was. Was that new? Was that like the new one? I think it's like 2016. Maybe. Okay, never mind. I keep seeing. I hate those YouTube commercials where it's like a horror movie. I freaking hate it. Duh, duh, blah, die. And it's like, I could have sworn the one this year is people like running around in the forest or something. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, Lord, suggestion time. Okay. What do you mean? This is the moment, guys, where Cloudy pulls out a suggestion from the suggestion box from you guys and your comments. You ready, Proto? Um, yeah, I'm ready. I'll pull one out, and then you'll you'll pull the next one out. Let me mix it up a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> this is a suggestion from wife. Oh, it's my wife. <laughs> uh, have a female voice on Proto's podcast. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. That's going to be hard to do. Is it? Yeah, I barely know any females. You think your madre would do it? My my madre? Oh, my mother. Okay. What is that? Native American for mother? Yeah. Is that Creek? What it's is that? A, Pawnee? It's Blackfoot. Blackfoot. I knew it. Skoden. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, maybe. I'm not. I, I don't think she's... She, She's not down with the technology, man. Would she, would, would she do it if you vaguely tell her what it's about and what it all represents and means? Um, I don't know, man. It'd be kind of weird. It, um, whew. Hmm. I don't know, man. I'd have, to, I'd have to knock it around. It'd probably be easier for me to uh, get a different female voice on the podcast, to be quite honest. Wait a minute. Hold up. Proto down here it says P.S. I will do Proto Dad's podcast. Oh wow, wife will cool, no problem. Really, we can talk. We can talk about good music for a change. <laughs> we can talk. We can talk about good movies for a change. She loves movies. She knows. Cool. She's one of those. Like, she knows all the actors and actresses and years and oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, we work with a we work with a guy that's really interested in the production company and the director and and all the other things they directed and how that how that means something special with this new movie that they're doing, and I I don't I can't keep up with all that shit. I mean I try, but I, I understand why it's all relevant. Yeah, man, we should totally do that. That'd probably be a good idea. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, we speaking talk of movies, about that. nice. We should, yeah. We, uh, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about Alec Baldwin, you know, blowing a fucking hole in the director on that movie? That's super sad. Yeah. It's really, it's horrible. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it is horrible. You don't want it to be true. Well, I, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. Same thing with that football player. He was going like 150 miles an hour in his Corvette, and he slammed into somebody, caught them on fire, and killed him. When did that happen? Like three o'clock last night, or in the morning. Or he was a football. 
today. Or Famous yesterday. football player. Yeah, I mean, he was in his second year, but I want to say he was a starter for uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Okay. It was like three guess, o'clock in the morning. He just. I like, guess he died. No, no. Him and his girlfriend completely fine. They were, I guess, blitzed out of the mines. <laughs> <laughs> Load a gun in the car and just rant like from the article I read it was kinda like one cheesy article and they it seemed like he was like trying to find somebody to run into. Yeah, I mean you can't trust <clears throat> journalism nowadays, man. I mean, because that stuff is so painted with biasms and True. it's not in America journalism isn't isn't journalism anymore. It's always pushing some sort of agenda depending on who their corporate overlords are, whichever you know, institution they belong to. Um, yeah, it's, it'd be nice if our, if our justice system and if our journalism system was searching for the truth instead of trying to win the case or whatever. I agree with you. And now, folks, it's time for Proto to pull out a suggestion from Suggestion Box. Go ahead, Proto. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So... Let me uh, like reach down in here real deep. Oh, you're one of those deep guys. I get it. <clears throat> yeah, well, if I mix it up. Um, somebody folded it up, actually. Oh, Hold on. Contentious. Uh, oh, fucking stupid. It says... <clears throat> it says you... Me and you should do another music um, review thing on your thing, but let me pick the song. Whoa, it says that right here. But let me pick it. So the commenter wants to pick a song? Does it have a song listed below? No, the commenter says I should pick the song. Oh, Pro- Proto should pick the song. That's what it says. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, if it's out of the suggestion box, I'm, my hands are kind of tied. I, we got to do it, right? <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I don't think there's a. I mean, you can't. You got to give the. You got to give the people what they want. Did it have a name? Who is bio? Is it anonymous? Or? No, I've already burned it. Oh fuck! <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's like Inspector Gadget. Go go gadget exploding message. Oh God! Okay. Uh, never to be seen or heard from again. Um, <laughs> nice. Okay, well, we got two solid suggestions. <laughs> A complete legitimate. <laughs> from the suggestion box. Uh, you guys, you keep putting them in. It works. You now know it works. I know a lot of you is hesitant. It was oh, completely yeah. random. Yes, I mixed yeah. my hand around the bowl. And yes, three or four papers fell on the floor because that happens every single fucking time i do this <laughs> yeah. so i hate it but it just keep, it happens keep sending them in people we'll pull yours eventually 100 percent. when I, it could be about anything any type of suggestion for, okay from for my podcast type. my looks my personality what i should think and believe in put it in there <laughs> <clears throat> oh that's fun that's a fun segment <sighs> Hell yeah. Great. Well, what's next? What do you think about skinwalkers? Skinwalkers. You're, you're native you're Native American. Uh is that shapeshifters, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool. I've heard people like on podcasts be like straight up like, hey, I've seen people shapeshift. I can't tell you about it. I like, can't tell you about it. <clears throat> Billy Corgan from um, Smashing Pumpkins, when he was on Joe Rogan's podcast, he seemed like super legit. Like, hey, I can't tell you online, but I've seen somebody shapeshift. I've seen a lizard person. <sighs> um, dude, there's there's people that say they've seen a lot of things. I kind of want to believe. You know, um, I think um, let's. I think it's important. So my wife, once upon a time, so let me interrupt myself for a fucking fourth time in a row. Um, once upon a time, I said, man, it's really stupid to let our kids believe in the tooth fairy. Or it's really stupid when somebody is just makes it their entire life 
to believe in a Sasquatch and hunt Sasquatches and they want to find the Sasquatch and let's talk about Sasquatch all the time. And my wife, with her wisdom, I don't know where she gets it from, but she said, when you, when you act like that, when you say things like that, you, you, you destroy the little magic that's left in the world. What? You said, you said Bond. Said, James Bond. I want to give away your actual name. Oh, I didn't say Bond, but that's cool. Yeah, I get I mean... She said, she said, like, when, like, so you say, I, I want to believe in skinwalkers. And if I were to sit here and say, dude, that's ridiculous. That's super so out of the, like, the realm of possibility. You're fooling yourself. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm trying to beat you over the head with a reality that I believe in. And I'm trying to suck what little magic and wonder there is out of the world that you live in. And I'm not trying to do that. That's what I'm saying. I get you. And I appreciate you your me? wife and her wise words. Yeah, because like no one ever said that to me before. And I was like, I was at a stance where I was like, listen, you know, I believe in an aliens coming down, probing our asses is fucking stupid. That's really silly. And I don't want to need to pay attention to anybody who wants to talk about that. That's not worth my time. And she said, when you act like that, you suck the magic out of the world. And what's, what's the harm in having a little bit of wonder and magic left? That's all we got out of what little there used to there used to be so much mystery you know when when we uh, when it was only the year 1000 or whatever dude the, everything was a fucking mystery there's no there was no limits to what was out there beyond the forest or over the mountain ridge you know from where you lived but now like we're so interconnected we can get we can get instant media news like news from uh, countries half the world away instantly as it's happening there is no magic left in the world. So I say, I say maybe there is skinwalkers. Maybe there is a Bigfoot. Maybe there are aliens that are just desperate to probe our little anuses. I got real and, into aliens. Tell me about it. Not really into it, but again, I know I'm buying this dude's ding dong, but Joe Rogan has a bunch of alien podcasts. Who I have a like, guest on that's like has some part to do with like aliens and extraterrestrial, and it's super interesting to me. I'd like to hear about it, but um, yeah, I think he had uh, um, I think it was from Three Doors Down or some shit. Uh, I don't remember. remember. Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, I can't remember his name. What was his name? Tommy Long. No. no yeah. No. Tommy, Tom DeLong. It? Tom DeLong. Tom... Excuse me. Yeah, and he was talking about aliens. He was all ate up with the aliens, man. And deep into it. Funny thing was that podcast was like four years ago. And I want to say like 10 of the things he talked about came to be. I would like somebody to, to point those out to me because I'm not keeping up with the times. So I don't know if we had time for the end of this podcast, but the New York Times released an article in 2019 about a program that the Pentagon had that we was only spending like $10 million or $60 million a year to investigate UFO sightings. And because that article was written in the New York Times and was taken seriously, some believe that that kind of opened the door to the government releasing a bunch of documents and admitting a bunch of things where the government straight up was like, hey, we have these crafts. And we don't know what it is. It's not us. It's not China. It's not Russia. We don't know. We're not going to say it's aliens, but we're not going to say anything else either. And a lot of that stuff that Tom DeLong said in his podcast came to be true. And it was through his influence and through his company's influence that that got out. Isn't that weird? That's pretty neat. I mean. Because he does um, seem like a dude who like took way too much acid in his 20s. And that he's like <laughs> half there and half not there, right? Yeah, I don't know if acid does that to you, but he probably he probably did a lot of other drugs. And he seems I mean, like someone you wouldn't take serious because he's a dude in a music video walking around naked, like yeah, balls ding dong swinging, and like that's half his music videos. 
But apparently all these people who are quote unquote big in the alien space or whatever you want to say, respect the stuff he has to say and his company to the stars. And they've like made big money moves apparently to where it had like a lot of influence. Hmm. Pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, I might have to go back and re-listen to that Tom DeLong one. I think um, Digi was the one that told me to listen to it. I think it was maybe about three years ago now, and I listened to it back then. But I wasn't, I, I, like, I wasn't interested. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a that's not a subject that captivates me. And I get what you're saying. To it's like, why am I spending time and effort into this subject? Yep. Because like, yeah. I 100 percent get that. But then all the other guests he's had on are pretty interesting people and they kind of have interesting stories, believe them or not. And they yeah. have knowledge. They have knowledge and not everybody can know everything. Yeah. Right. And that's the reason why Joe Rogan does what he does because he's, he recognizes that it's inter- It's good and healthy to talk to people from different walks of life because it broadens your horizons faster than you could broaden, broaden them your own with your own means. So, um, I'm I much I feel much the same way. I mean, we're lucky we work in a pretty diverse place and I get to talk to people from all walks of life, so but yeah, dude, he's got it. So so just because he's on Joe Rogan's podcast obviously gives him a whole bunch of credence, gives him a bunch of credit. Cuz he even had the drummer of Blink-182. I'm blinking on his name. But he, he, he I, I should share a clip in the Discord because he, he had some funny stories to talk about DeLong and about mm-hmm. his obsession with everything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everything supernatural, I guess this guy believes in and, and has obsessed over his whole life. So. Mm-hmm. No, that would be funny. I thought you were going to say that, that the drummer guy was like really into ghosts and spirits and stuff and was like no tom DeLong is out of his fucking mind with the alien shit roswell was a cover-up it was a, you know everything is just fucking made up because all the people are just you know whatever but but spirits i've seen ghosts yeah you know? and then, then he goes and then he goes then he, then he goes into the whole ghost to haunted house thing I, you know i've seen ghosts in haunted house move chairs around and stuff like that it's like oh okay so that guy's wacky, but you're totally legit. I get you. Isn't it funny when people do that? Yeah, yeah. And it's like they can't see the hip- hypocrisy on their own lips. That's hilarious. I'll have to send it to you. I think you'll enjoy the clip. Okay. Yeah, link it in the Discord. And I think with that, I mean, we're about an hour and a half in. Yeah, that could be good. You feeling good about it? I'm feeling real good, real good about it, man. I mean, it's been it's been really great. It's been productive, fruitful, uh, energetic, uh, slimy, lovely, dark, scary, everything. <laughs> well, thank you for Proto for joining me. Thank everybody who got through the pod. I appreciate y'all. Like, comment, sub. Go to Proto's channel. He's a YouTuber, dude. He does some cool stuff. He's going to be doing at least five videos a day for the next month for his mental health. Yeah, I got a lot. I got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of a lot of different topics. Uh, firing out videos all the time, like uh, rapid fire machine gun. I I shoot them off faster than Alec Baldwin. Check them out. <laughs> Keep it gladdy. <laughs> Later. <laughs>